Stop creating SOPs that no one on your team will ever use. In this video, I'm gonna show you why SOPs aren't always the right tool, what to use instead for faster delegation, and how to know which tool to use for each task and process in your agency. If you're new here, hi, my name's Sam, and over the last three and a half years, I've helped over 70 different agencies systemize their operations. And one of the most common mistakes I see is people wasting hours creating SOPs that no one ever reads. So I'm gonna show you the exact system that I teach inside of my workflow essentials program and if you stick around to the end of the video you can get my free cheat sheet that will help you today. So contrary to popular belief SOPs aren't some magic document that will suddenly make your business run without you. One of my very first clients was an ad agency and the founder wanted to start to delegate some of his fulfillment processes to one of his team members. I'd been reading all of the great system books at the time. Books like Traction and E-Myth Revisited and those books are considered the greats for a reason and they teach you some of the key principles when it comes to systemizing your business. But one of the resounding bits of advice across all of these types of books was to create SOPs for every single process in your business. With that in mind, I created an SOP database for my client and told him to create SOPs for the tasks that he wanted to delegate. So the founder went away and started writing in excruciating detail, step-by-step -step instructions on how to invoice clients, host strategy calls, write ad copy and gather feedback and testimonials from clients. And what was the result of all of this hard work? Well, the client told me that just one of those SOPs worked. Just one. The founder was successfully able to delegate the task of invoicing clients to his team member, but all of the other SOPs failed miserably. The person read them once and then never read them again. They made mistakes, kept on asking the founder questions, or forgot about the tasks altogether. And that's when I realized that SOPs aren't always the answer. Now, I'm not saying to never write an SOP again. SOPs definitely have their place. They're great for repeatable step-by-step -step tasks, much like how to invoice a client. But for anything that requires judgment, creativity, or is prone to human error, they can be clunky and ineffective. So if SOPs aren't always the answer, what is? Well, I went back to the founder and took a closer look at his processes. I asked him what problems had he actually faced in delegating the other processes that he had created SOPs for. Number one, on the strategy call, the team member wasn't able to easily reference the SOP in the cadence of actually talking to the client. Number two, for writing ad copy, although the team member had experience in writing copy, he wasn't able to easily emulate the style of the agency. And number three, the team member was simply forgetting to ask for feedback and to testimonials from the clients at the end of their project together. So I took these problems and tried to think to myself, what other tools could we use here that might be helpful? I didn't limit myself to just SOPs and tried to think outside the box of what would be the best solution to those exact problems. Here's what we came up with. For the strategy call, we created a call template that had an agenda that acted like a script that the team member was able to more easily follow. For writing ad copy, we created a reference guide with all the different types of examples that the agency liked to use that the team member was then able to emulate when they were creating copy. And finally, for gathering feedback and testimonials, we created an offboarding automation that sent out a series of emails at the end of the client project, asking the client for testimonials. After some time, the founder told me that he was finally able to get these tasks off his plate and win back some time that he could spend in other areas of his business. I walked away from the project feeling like I had found some magical bottle of elixir. What I learned was SOPs was just one tool, an entire toolbox of other tools that could be used to improve a process. Inside Workflow Essentials, we call these tools wiki items. And that's because we tend to store all of these tools inside of our wiki in Notion. So here is a non-exhaustive list of all the different types of wiki items that I've come across when working with clients. Obviously we have an SOP, which is our standard operating procedure, essentially the step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete a given process. But then we also have things like a checklist, which is a document with all of the steps and sub-steps of a process that a person can check off as they go through. 
a template which turns a process into a copy and paste format, for example, like a email template for sending the welcome email to a client. An automation which will automate a manual process and in some cases automate multiple manual processes. A reference guide which brings together lots of different examples from work that you have done or that others have done that you like to use as inspiration and many, many more. So the goal isn't to SOP everything, it's to match the right tool to the right task. So in the last part of this video, let's walk through the three-step process, which will show you how to choose the right wiki item. So step one is simply to identify the task that you are either A, wanting to delegate, or B, finding some problems with. Once you have that task in mind, step two then is to brainstorm as many different ideas that will help you either delegate the task or act as a solution to the problems you're experiencing. And step three is to reference our wiki cheat sheet to take a look at all of the different examples of wiki items we have and when we would normally use them. If you'd like to get a copy of our wiki cheat sheet for yourself, you can check out the link down below in the description. So as an example, let's say you're looking at the task of publishing a YouTube video. You're not wanting to delegate it yet, but you have been facing a problem. There's lots of little sub steps to do, and because of that, you have been forgetting some of them. There's so many things to remember. You have to write the description, add keywords, pin a pinned comment. And because of that, each time you publish a YouTube video, you're bound to forget one of these steps. So what could you do to solve this issue? You could create an SOP with all of the different steps that you have to do. But in reality, as you're publishing a YouTube video, this is a process that happens pretty quickly. And so it might be a bit of a hassle to keep on going back and forth between the SOP and the process. Instead, in this particular use case, what I would recommend is creating a YouTube publishing checklist. As you go through the process, you can check off each of the different items to make sure you've done them. Much like a pilot will check off all of the things that he has on his in-flight checklist. So hopefully by now you can recognize that SOPs aren't always the answer and that you have a plethora of tools at your disposal to begin systemizing your business. But if you truly want to get a grip on your business, you need to take a look at the overall system rather than each of the individual processes. And to do that, you'll need to know how to create a process map which you can learn in this video here. In this video, we'll break down step-by-step step how to create a process map, identify which processes are causing problems for you, and then using wiki items, we can then improve those processes and begin to systemize your business. 